Thank you very much to No Cold War Britain for the invitation, but above all for organizing such an important event, as you were saying, Fiona, at the doorstep of the NATO summit in Madrid. This space is important because we must be prepared for the agenda that will be adopted at this summit. This terrible dream of a global NATO reinforced, which is not only a European issue, since it, it counts with global allies like Morocco, Colombia, Australia, or Japan. NATO has built an international network of arms agreements, military bases, operations, training with armies of many countries, intelligence, espionage, and interference in countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, and which is now moving towards a greater confrontation with China and even has planned to militarize space. The limit of war won't be the planet anymore, but the galaxy. Please read its nuts. In these four months of war in Ukraine, the international landscape has changed a lot and has made it difficult to unite a mass movement for peace and against NATO that mobilizes massively to answer NATO's empty discourse of democracy, peace, security, and defense of our values. There is a great debate in the battle of ideas and in the memory, in the history, but also a great challenge to mobilize and articulate concrete proposals to these discourses that divide us and further intensify this international crisis in which we live. And the fact is that this next NATO country summit is marked by the war in Ukraine and everything that underlies the agenda of this global NATO that is driven by the interest of the USA. In these four months, we are seeing things that a year ago we wouldn't have believed could happen. How the German government has taken a historic turn at, at the end of February by committing to invest more than 150,000 million euros in military spending. We see Finland and Sweden joining NATO without a referendum or even a minimum of democratic mechanisms. Biden makes very dangerous statements about a possible Chinese invasion of Taiwan, drawing a dangerous parallel between Ukraine and Taiwan. He pretends for us to forget that Taiwan is part of the People's Republic of China and that China's internal problems should be solved in China. Sanctions on Russia triggers inflation, further increase of global foreign security, energy poverty. Moreover, the framework of discussion has become polarized in these blocks um, and this blocks a serious analysis of a truly dangerous world situation. All this should be a wake up call for those of us who fight for peace, as Ajam was saying, because peace cannot be just an idea, must be a political practice, a common strategy that involves the trade unions, the feminist movement, the ecologist movement, anti racist movement, etc., in a broader alliance for another world order that feels peace with meaning, with social justice, and that articulates international relations in democracy, mutual support, and the sovereignty of the peoples. We see how these last few months have made it clear that the framework of the United Nations have been emptied and that it is necessary to return to the founding elements of the United Nations Charter and return to build effective commitments to disarmament, dialogue and respect among each other. We cannot assume that the international community is NATO because that would make invisible the map we saw in April when the UN suspended Russia's membership of the Human Rights Council with 93 countries voting in favor, but 24 against and 58 abstentions. The world is diverse and people must be able to decide their own path. We cannot address the war in Ukraine without seeing that it is essential to articulate ourselves against the Cold War against China in the face of a risk, moreover, of a future hot war. We must understand that if peace was really wanted, the war in Ukraine wouldn't have started. If peace were really wanted, the war in Ukraine would have already ended. A ceasefire and a return to negotiations between Ukraine and Russia is urgent, but so it is stopping this process that is once again dividing the world into two blocks.
Peace will not be achieved in a divided world, but neither by following the wishes of the USA with its dream of becoming the only power. And that leads us to disaster because they don't assume the current reality of a multipolar world with multiple poles and diverse national and regional projects and alliances. A lasting peace is achieved in a world in dialogue that moves forward by tackling people's real problems such as poverty, hunger, the climate crisis, and access to healthcare. To those who call us peace activists naive, we must say that following the wishes of the USA is delirious. As an example, we have the European Union acting against the interests of its own people, renouncing to have its own project, following the orders of the USA. A European Union that speaks of Europe as if Russia isn't also Europe, and that therefore we are inter interconnected whether we like it or not. Moreover, high representatives of the European Union send, sending us the message, the message that each of one of us is also at war. Why are they using war rhetoric, making us individually responsible and encouraging us to promote boycotts? When Josep Borrell said to us, turn down your home heating, turn off the gas, everyone needs to make an individual effort to cut their gas consumption, is because they want us on board. They want us to wage war from our homes, promoting, promoting hatred against the Russian population who also lives with us, while we will be freezing next winter because we can't pay the bill. All wars end with dialogue and negotiations. Let's start now. Let's stop the disaster. Many articles have been written, many analyses have been made. Not all of us think the same, but it is time to get people out to the streets. It is time to shape, uh, to shake up minds, to send an alternative message to this nonsense that normalizes war, death, racism, hatred, and poverty. That makes invisible the other wars that also cause, causes death and destruction, that reinforces colonial mentality and divides us as peoples. We need a new compass, and it's time to work. I want these minutes to reflect on how to really work together, because there is no other way. Struggle is the only way. And we do not fight alone, we fight with others. Let us tackle the fundamental work that has been postponed, that has been attempted but frustrated at some point. In the face of this irresponsibility of NATO governments, we must put common sense, the people's lives, and the planet first. In recent months, as I said at the beginning, events have made it harder to articulate this massive movement for peace and against NATO. And that is why it is essential to mobilize for the summit that will take place in Madrid. We need dialogue to address the mechanisms that promote war and the reasons behind the war. A dialogue with people to collectively understand that peace is not only a priority for the peace movement, but for everyone. That is why we call you to the Peace Summit, no to NATO, next week in Madrid, next weekend. Next Friday and Saturday, we will be having panels, debates, workshops, and on Sunday morning, we will march in the streets of Madrid for peace against NATO and against wars. I hope we can sit down to think about objectives, but also about campaigns, about concrete things to organize ourselves, about tools to talk to our neighbors, to act in our unions, in our movements, and for those of you that are coming to Madrid, we have a workshop on international perspectives and strategies uh, for peace next Saturday at 4 p.m. to debate this further. It is the moment to organize ourselves on, in this common struggle because struggle is the only way. So see you in Madrid.